I think the panel uh, was just amazing today. I really appreciated their candor, their vibrancy, their excitement about the future of digital health and data transformation. We learned, I would say, three main things. One is that collaboration is key as you think about industries, avoiding pitfalls, thinking about the future of care and how we can leverage each other's not only learnings, but also partnerships. The second, I think, is specifically agility. Thinking about agility as you pilot, make mistakes, but occasionally knowing that you can pivot and figuring out what are ways to really innovate and support better patient outcomes. And I think the third is making sure that people also know data is key, but making sure that you have the right use cases for the right models and prioritizing it in the right way. Creating a very important foundation for not only data models, but also NLP, different language models, and thinking through if data gets stored in different places, how you still manage that to make sure that the source of the data is true. It's been incredible to meet different people, not only in the network, but also people that are knowledgeable about your industry and want to help. I think it's important when you go to conferences to actually have a goal for what you want to achieve, who you want to talk to, and this conference has set it up very seamlessly. Everything from the app to the ability to know who is here ahead of time. And then on top of that, to really figure out how can we collaborate. This conference also has a very nice bent of we're here to collaborate as industry leaders and making sure that everyone is here trying to help serve a larger community in a better way to scale. Everly Health is a home diagnostic company that started first on the consumer side, helping patients who wanted to get certain lab tests done but couldn't get reimbursed for their own home. So they could actually, with the press of a button, click, have, order a test, put it back in the mail, and get tested. Everything from food sensitivity to other things such as fertility. It's grown since then into a provider network. On top of that, getting payers to reimburse for something called HEDA STARS quality metrics, meaning people can get colorectal cancer screenings in their home, they can do A1Cs, which is diabetes management, and also chronic kidney disease. I do think that AI, with these different models that they're learning, needs to be built in a way that doesn't introduce bias. So I give an example oftentimes of a provider, um, let's say even in payers who used to do prior authorization, if there's a black box and you're not sure if you use old data to actually model, you could introduce bias, as opposed to doing it from scratch and figuring out exactly where people should get a certain chemotherapy or an MRI approved, making it um, actually very seamless, but also making sure that you don't also approve um, or deny anything, but you can only approve through AI models because there's a black box in terms of AI and sometimes you don't know how the model is creating these denials. And so I think there are safeguards to do that. On top of that, it's making sure that you have an ethics committee to, to review everything and also um, introducing it so that it's not just certain populations that have access to this, but that is a, it's a universal um, benefit. So the Innovation Growth Board has been very inspiring because I see all the great work that MGB is doing. Uh, my goal is to help support the no not only commercialization of different kinds of things that could be a startup, but then how do you get it to scale? How do you think about who pays for it and why and how? initially off the bat. Um, I just recently wrote a book called Digital MD, and with that I talk a lot about when you're scaling innovation, you have to think about all the stakeholders, the five Ps, payers, providers, patients, pioneers, and policymakers. Sometimes you have a great product, but you don't have the right policymakers who are approving it. Sometimes you have a product that's great, but you don't know who's paying for it. How are you getting it reimbursed? And so considering those upfront when you're building a business model as we commercialize things from MGB is key. And I also think as we're thinking about innovation, it's to pull in the right networks and the right people who are experts in their field to help give input is key. So I thought about it more and I think one thing that people always ask me, I get reached out on social media and whatnot on how did I start companies and how did I go from a clinician to being an executive. And I think the big thing for me is that I always said out loud what I wanted from the universe so that the universe reflected back and could be a steward of my journey. Um, I've had a, a lot of ups and downs. I've um, pivoted from all sorts of different companies, but I think what I've learned is that you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your product. You do have to have a product market fit, but you can reach out to people and try to ask them for advice. I've learned also, you not only have to say out loud, but you have to reach into your network, go to conferences like this, think about the ways that you are building your own career 
as almost like your own board of directors. So building the people that you trust, that know you, and try to align your own skill set, your own qualifications, and your own um, belief system and your mission statement to the product that you want to sell and the things that you want to commercialize. Um, I definitely think that as a woman, sometimes as a minority, when you're starting out companies, um, you have to build a bit more credibility. You have to lean in more, but I think it's very feasible to do. I was pregnant um, with my second. Unfortunately, I had a stillborn, my first. And I'm very open about it because there are times where I thought to myself, maybe it's because I was just too driven, but I really feel like it was a gift in disguise. You know, a few years later, I now have three children. Um, I've built uh, different companies, and I feel like for my when I was pregnant with my second, I was fundraising. And I had some really amazing investors who said, you know, I believe in you. I know you're pregnant, but you can be the CEO. We have an opportunity here that is great. We know you can lead. And I just want to encourage people that are thinking through, is it right for me? Can I innovate? How do I get started? Is to lean in and to think about it and to think about balancing everything. Um, one thing I do have is a very supportive partner. Um, it's also to reach into your own network of people on a personal level to build your not only board of advisors, but also a partnership with people that can help you think about raising your family and creating the family that you want. Um, not everyone will want to create a family, but as people balance their relationships and their personal life, um, I've also found that it's really helpful for me to spend time not only with people that know you, but also think about your network and think about um, making sure that you're aligned with your own mission, um, where your skill sets are. For example, I do enjoy selling, and I realize that over time, some people don't like that, and some people love the research aspect, or they like the thought leadership aspect, or they want to be on the operational side. So leaning in or financially on where you think your skill set is, is really key. Um, on top of that, it's also to make sure that you have a sort of a North Star, kind of a goal for where you want to be. Um, I think to myself too, the brands that I believe in, you know, the aspirational ones are what I like to do and think about, especially with, let's say, Apple or Google. So my aspirational goal has always been anchoring on certain brand qualities that I believe in. So in my mind, it's being authentic, um, being enterprising, being a builder, and thinking about also being magnanimous. Um, those are sort of four skill sets that I feel like I've carried throughout my own career. So it's think about your own values and what you resonate with and if the position that you're looking for and the things you want to start and the community you want to build within your company is aligned with that, I think is key. So I hope that's helpful.